Hello everybody and welcome to one of the longest awaited videos of Eternity version 2. If you've been following me on Instagram, you would know that I sold my old van that I have been living in for two years and I bought this bad boy. And I've been converting it for the past four months and now I'm on the road living in it full time. So I thought it was time to do a tour of it and I've gotta say, this thing has all the bells and whistles and it is quite the upgrade from my last fan build. I'm just so proud of it and really excited about it, so I can't wait to show it to you guys. So I'm gonna stop babbling, let's get right to it. I'll see you guys in there. Welcome to my humble abode. This is a 2020 Ram Pro Master 3500 159 inch extended wheelbase high top van. I bought this thing brand new in November of 2020 and I started my build in January of 2021, working on it very slowly. And then by March of 2021, I really started dedicating a lot of time to the build and I was able to finish it at the end of April which is kind of awesome. Most of the build I did myself. However, I had my brother help me with all the cabinetry. He's very skilled at all the cabinet thingies. So he, yeah, I've got him to do some of the stuff. <laughs> and I did all the staining and painting. Also, before we dive deep into the build, I also want to add that any appliance that I used in my van build, like this oven, my fridge, or my sink, or anything like that, I'm gonna try my best to include that link in the description of this video. And if you do decide to purchase any of those things, please use the link that I included in the description because that's my affiliate link and it helps support me and my channel and everything that I do. So let's jump right into the tour. I'm tired of babbling, tired of the nonsense. We're gonna start from the back and move forward. So. Follow me back to the bedroom. I'll see you there. So here we are. Welcome to the bedroom. Yes, I am on my bed with my shoes on. Uh, long hair, don't care. It's my van, I do what I want. This is a full size mattress. And I am 5'10", and I sleep here absolutely comfortably with so much room to spare. I'm pretty sure a six foot two person could probably sleep here. I maximized as much space in the bedroom as possible, just in case I had a weird growth spurt and got up to six foot two. I don't know, man, you never know. You just gotta be ready for anything in life. And that's what I'm, re I'm definitely ready for that. And then on the nice toasty nights when I just need a little airflow in the bedroom, I got this bad boy right here. This is a max air fan, which is pretty cool. Uh, it, it blows air in and sucks air out. However, my fan right now, the motor is kind of messed up, so it only works on the first setting, but it has 10 settings, so it can it can blow really good. I just haven't experienced it yet because it's broken. Um, so that I'm waiting on them to send me a new part for that. But in the meantime, I have this fan next to my next to my bed, which is really awesome because I can move it anywhere I want. Um, I can turn it this way. This way, I can turn it down, up, whatever. So if I'm laying on this side or this side, I can have the fan pointing at my face and keep me cool during the night. All right, moving on, we've got our clothes storage. It's not really anything special here. I store my shirts, socks, underwear, lingerie, pants, you know, whatever. But yeah, and then these are the back doors to the van. Yep, back doors right here. All right, let's move on. Move on to the next destination. Oh, God. Right next to the bedroom, we've got my hanging closet. I got these awesome handles off of Etsy. If I could have every freaking handle in this van be this, I would because I love them. But this is where I hang all of my shirts, sweaters, coats, jackets, you have it, and my belt. It's pretty gnarly. It's pretty gnarly. It's totes gnar, gnar, bro. This, my friends, is my beautiful kitchen. If you guys have been following my YouTube channel, you would know that in my last van, my kitchen was not so luxurious. I had a foot pump for my water system, for my fridge, I had a cooler, and for my stove, it was a camping stove that I had to pull out, put together to use, and then when I was done, I had to take it apart and store it away. It was probably one of the most inconvenient things I've ever had to live with. But that is no longer, my friend, in this van, we live in luxury. Check this out. That is an electrical pump, baby. 
That is pure luxury. I cannot express how excited I am about that. So under this beautiful sink, we've got these amazing doors that I'm really proud of. I love these knobs, got these off Etsy, stenciled these bad boys up, you know, just to make vibes all vibey and junk. If you open these doors, it allows you access to my gray water tank. Basically what gray water is, is all the soapy water that you use to wash dishes. It flows out from under the sink and into this tank. I also store my trash and Millie's food down here, along with a few cleaning supplies. Pretty simple sink setup, but I just love these doors, so I had to show them off. They're just so pretty to me. So this here is probably one of the biggest 12 volt fridges that you can get in your van. This is a GE fridge. It was about, I think 700 or $800, which is surprisingly cheap for a 12 volt fridge for its size. It is massive. <laughs> this door is on some sort of lock mechanism that my brother gave me. I'm not sure, sure exactly what this is called, but it basically locks the door so the door doesn't fly open when I'm driving. So I take that off and it stores so much food. Look at this sucker. It's huge. I've even got tea in here. I got all my veg. I got my meats. Like, I mean, come on. Like, you can't have a better fridge in a van. Also, I would like to add that this fridge, even though it's huge, its power consumption is so small. I think when the compressor is actually on, it maybe uses six amps, which is nothing. Very, very happy with this thing. Highly recommend it. It's super awesome. Next up, this bad boy. This has been a lifesaver. This is not only a stove, it's an oven too. And right under my oven, I've got my drawer where I store all of my pots and pans. And because this thing is literally so massive, it's super heavy. So I had to put these child lock things on in order to keep it from coming out while I'm driving and going around heavy turns. And it surprisingly works really well. Also, did I mention I have an oven? What the freak, that's so awesome. And above the kitchen area, this is where I store plates, cups, uh, miscellaneous kitchen stuff. Right here, some food, vegetables, fruit. And in this last cabinet is where I store all my spices and whatnot. This drawer right here is actually a part of my kitchen too. I was building out my kitchen and then I realized I had nowhere to store any of my utensils. <laughs> so I had to think quick and I felt like this was a good spot for it. it. Doesn't have a handle yet, but it's a pretty massive drawer that I fill with all of my utensils and you know I got that Chick-fil-A sauce on deck. <laughs> Just in case for emergencies, you know, you know how it is. And this, is my dining room. I've got this awesome extension to my countertop that's on a flip up mechanism. I often eat my breakfast and my dinner here because I've got this giant window to look out of and it's really, really nice. Also right above me is where I store all my shoes and toiletries and a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. And right next to my shoe storage is my secondary Max Air Fan, which is conveniently located right over my stove. Whenever I'm cooking, I like to open up these windows here and turn on the Max Air Fan. And basically what it does is it sucks all the clean air from outside and brings it inside. And it takes all the stale air from the inside of the van and sucks it out. So it's just another safety measure. But also during the summer, having a secondary fan is pretty much necessary. I highly recommend it because the airflow in the van with two fans is pretty incredible. And under the passenger seat of my van, I have a diesel heater installed. And this bad boy, it keeps me nice and toasty in the winter months. It is fully operational off of my solar system that I have installed in my van, as well as diesel fuel. <sighs> All right, so now we're on the lower end of the van. Uh, this is probably like the cutest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I decided to give Millie her own bedroom. We had a little bit of extra space. So I was like, you know what, why not? She, my girl's been so good lately. I'm gonna treat her right. And guess what I did? She's got a light and she's got a fan. Listen. So on those extra toasty days, she's got some nice airflow in there for her. 
I also implemented a door to her bedroom. And the reason I did this is because I like to crate Millie when I'm not in the van because she likes to climb on the countertops when I'm not here and there's scratches all over it. Also, there was an instance where she was sitting in the driver's seat and someone called animal control even though it was 60 degrees outside. It's a, it's a whole thing. So I keep her in the crate. She's comfortable in there. She loves it. She's happy. I also made it to where I can fully remove the door rather than just open it because if I were to just open the door, it would be in the way constantly of like everything else. So I like to remove the door and then put it under my desk to store it away. Millie, I see you. She is so dirty right now. You know how dirty you are? Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> That's why she has her own bedroom. <laughs> okay, so this is kind of awkward because I got the way I have the camera set up, but essentially under Millie's bed, this also doesn't have a knob, so <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to pull out. But this is where I store all of Millie's toys, her harness, you know, all of her miscellaneous stuff. So Millie's bedroom is pretty freaking legit if you ask me. Now, for the moment that you've all been waiting for. My gaming station slash editing station slash workstation. Yes, I am able to game fully off grid. I am powered off of the sun, and it's wonderful. I can play World of Warcraft, I can play Call of Duty, I can play whatever I want, anywhere I want, any time that I want. And it's the most freeing feeling ever. I basically got a full-size desk with a full-size computer in my van, and it is, it is quite surreal. This thing is so comfortable. Even though I'm in this wooden chair here, it's still comfortable. I actually opted to not do a gaming chair or a rolling desk chair because not only do they take up a lot of space, but a rolling chair in a moving vehicle is probably the worst idea in the world. And I learned that from my last build because I had a rolling desk chair. Now I'm not gonna go into the full details of my gaming setup because I want to dedicate an entire video to it so I can dive really deep into how I power my system how I provide internet for myself anywhere I want, and sort of the specs of my computer and what sort of games I play. So if you wanna see that video, make sure to subscribe. I will be posting that video hopefully soon, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's move on to the next thing. So every desk has a drawer, okay? Every house has a junk drawer, and my house is no different. I've got the largest junk drawer of them all, and it houses all of my computer or electronic miscellaneous cables and things and uh, I feel like you really don't have a house without a junk drawer and so I had to just implement a junk drawer in my van come on I mean so junk drawer and then right under that is actually a toilet yes I finally have a toilet in my van in my last van I did not have anything and I peed in a cup or in the woods or at a public restroom you know but now I have a toilet that I don't use. I literally never use this thing because I don't need to. I've been out in nature constantly and I just sort of go outside and do my business there. I, I really only implemented this toilet in my van for dire emergencies. When I'm in a place where I can't go outside, there's no public restroom, this is my last resort. I haven't used it yet, um, but it is a toilet. It's quite small, but it's definitely a toilet. So there you have it right there right near my desk and I can actually, ooh, I didn't even think about this, but I can sit at this toilet and look at these views out this window. Pretty luxurious if you ask me. Welcome to my garage. First up, this is my propane locker. This houses my propane tank in an airtight container. Propane leaks a little bit. So you don't want a propane tank just sitting in your van. So you have to put it in an airtight container and then have a hole drilled through the floor so that the propane that does leak out goes under and outside the van instead of inside your van. Up above my propane locker is my outdoor shower. Now, it's not the nicest shower in the world. I don't have hot water, it's just cold water. However, it works! I've had many showers in the middle of nature and it's like the most freeing feeling in the world to just get naked and shower in the middle of nowhere off of your van. Like, it's super cool. And right next to my shower is my water inlet for my water tank. I just unscrew this and whenever I'm at a water spigot, I can just use a hose, poke it in there and then fill up my 40 gallon water tank just like that. Directly behind my propane locker 
is my water tank. This is a 40 gallon water tank that will last me about a week worth of being off grid, which is kind of insane between me drinking water, washing dishes, and showering once a week with it. That's kind of crazy that my 40 gallon water tank can last me up to seven days. And the way I measure out how much water is left in my tank, I have this hole here that I carved out it exposes the tank wall. You can actually see the water level in it, which is really convenient. So every now and then I come back here and check to see my water level. And if it's a little too low, I just go into town and refill and then come back out. Well, this side of the van, my friends, is the mitochondria of the van, the powerhouse. This is where all the power is conjured, consumed, and stored. Starting off with this front panel here, this is my breaker box. This is where I house all of my 120 volt breakers as well as all my 12 volt fuses. And if anything were to go wrong, I would just replace those fuses or flip a breaker right here. And right next to my breaker box is my signal booster. And basically what that does, I have an antenna on my roof of my van. And when I'm parked in a remote location like this one here and I have no signal, I'm able to flip on my signal booster and that antenna on top of my van basically grabs nearby cell signal and brings it closer to me and amplifies it within my van. So now inside my van, I have cell signal and I have internet. Now behind this wall is where all the juicy components to my power are stored. On the roof of my van, I have two 300 watt Renogy solar panels that collect energy from the sun and that energy is then stored in two 310 amp hour AGM VMAX tank batteries that I have here. And with that setup, I am able to game and live off grid almost infinitely. As long as there's a few sunny days here and there, I, I can pretty much live infinitely off of this solar setup. But on top of my solar panels, I also have something called a smart battery isolator. So essentially what that does is when my vehicle is turned on, it allows my alternator to charge my batteries too which is really convenient if there's a cloudy day or a couple cloudy days when there's no sun and my solar panels just aren't juicing up my batteries enough, I can then turn on my vehicle and then my vehicle is then charging my auxiliary batteries to allow me to have power off grid. And I will go full into detail on my electrical setup on another day because I feel like that, that takes a whole video in itself as well. <laughs> so make sure to stay tuned for that. If you're interested in it, um, make sure to subscribe. I will be posting that soon. Well, there you have it, guys. That was a tour of my Ram Promaster van that I'm now living and traveling in full time. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I'll be posting more videos about my van and my van adventures every week from here on out because I kind of want to fill you guys on some of the ins and outs of the van life journey that I've been having. So make sure to stay tuned for that. But anyway, I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to watch this video and watch me brag about this van that I'm so incredibly proud of. I cannot thank you guys enough for all of your continuous support. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace. Test, one, two, three. That gummit test. One, two, three. Pictures up. Quiet on set. I need you to stop flowing wind, please. All right, let's print that one. Print it. That was a good one. Time to move on into the band, that gummit. <laughs>